God spoke to me right there at that moment. He was like, no, you've lost everything because you got so much else to gain. All you need is a bigger stage. Now, this whole time of my mm. life, from Bugs Bunny, all the way doing all the shows, doing the band, doing everything that I'd done up to that point, was just grooming me. He was getting me ready for something that most people have to pay to learn. I learned it just by life. And once I got to that point, I was just like, wow, I'm sitting there with tears in my eyes and I'm mad, but then the tears dried up and I was just like, you are right, God. I have nothing to lose and everything to gain right now. And I do need a bigger stage. And then right at that moment, I was sitting in the room at my mom's house and the TV went to a commercial and it was Howie Mandel. And he said, are you the next one of America's Got Talent? Do you have what it takes to headline your own show in Vegas? <laughs> Dollar prize winner, I am talking to you. Welcome to Crossbars, the podcast where we discuss interesting topics with alternative perspective. I am your co-host, Big O. Have with me today. <laughs> hey, I got Jason Nay. I'm back in the building with our guest for today, who is none other than Mr. Landau Eugene Murphy Jr. Give it up for Landau, y'all. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Thanks. thanks. Yeah. Okay. So West Virginia. Okay. So now. <laughs> Watch yourself, Dub V. Dub V, watch yourself, bro. Oh, that's the V? All right. I wasn't sure. I, I listened to Lil w. Wayne lyrics. He no, said the peace w. sign is like, you know, the middle finger and, a, and shooting at you. I said, oh, I thought it was the peace sign. <laughs> so then I, I don't know. I don't want no problems. You know, traveling through West Virginia, that's what it is. Yeah, W. Absolutely. All right. Got you. All right, cool. So now, <laughs> West Virginia. So, brother. Tell me about your journey. We know that you're from West Virginia. What, how did you get into classical singing? Uh, born and raised here in Logan, West Virginia. Uh, as a kid, man, my babysitter was television. And I watched a mm -hmm. lot of Harry Melodies and Looney Tunes. And they always made fun of the Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, uh, Bean Crosby. And it's, that's how I got into it. So you can blame it all on Bugs Bunny. Okay. <laughs> so so we're going to blame it on Bugs Bunny. Okay. <laughs> you remember okay. the thing the rooster used to come out and sing like uh, Bean Crosby? They and would. Like, and all the they chickens would. would go, oh, Frank. Ah. That's where I got it from. Yeah, I, re funny. I, remember that. I remember that episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he actually sang to one of the chickens and she like had a thousand eggs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she kind of like went up. <laughs> I seen that joint. Yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. But okay. Again, that's funny. Uh, and to, uh, to go further with that, in 1983, I was watching a Motown, because I grew up in a Motown house, to be, you know, really truthful about it. Um, but I was watching a Motown 25th anniversary special, and they had, uh -oh. Patty, they had Patty LaBelle, Joe Cocker, uh -huh. Billy Preston, The Temptations. That's the first time we seen Michael Everybody. Jackson. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Oh, I big, remember the day. Thing. Everybody yeah. was on there and they had a clip of uh, Natalie Cole singing on stage, but he had like a side-by-side -side with, with her dad singing Mona Lisa Smile. And Mona Lisa is my mom's name. So it's like a song that oh. I, I was singing as a little kid. And, and I seen one of the classiest black men ever. You know, he didn't have to do anything, but actually stand there and sing songs and look, you know, Debra Nah. Dapper Dan, <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So so now you into Looney Tunes and now you see the the rooster and singing to all the chicks and yeah. now you said oh I like that okay so now let's let's take a little journey so you're in West Virginia and you're a black man how yeah. is that experience in itself because we we need to know well I need to know excuse me and the audience because just being honest we didn't think it's that many of y'all there you know so I mean it it, it was a uh, it was wonderful you know I never like really experienced too much of, or, or saw too much racism or anything like that, actually until I moved out of West Virginia. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, I was born and raised here since I was, you know, 
and since 1974 until I was 11 years old. My parents split. My dad moved to Columbus, Ohio. My mom moved to Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, she took yeah. And I grew up in Detroit from 11 to like 26. Mm. You know, and that's where I actually saw racism and saw, you know, gang violence and the crack boom area. This is 1984. This is like the- you know, yeah, yeah. But before I left West Virginia, man, I was playing in the creeks and in the mountains, making mud pies. Hey, uh, hey, you know, me boy. too, buddy. Yeah, I was a country <laughs> boy, man. You know, you know, and I had friends that was, you know, weird. Some, some white, some black. You know, but mm -hmm. I, I know black faces that look that that sound like white guys. Like if you close your eyes, you would think they was one of the biggest. Say that people. again, bars, right? You know what I'm saying? You would think yeah. they were some of the biggest rednecks. That's the truth. Or anything. I mean, and, and even if you come around them and they're standing there with their white counterpart or, or, or their white friends, they would treat you worse than that white person would. Like, I experienced that. And then once I got to Detroit, I seen the black on black crime. I seen that part of racism where mm -hmm, you was mm -hmm. walking down a certain neighborhood that the people would try to jump on you like, what are you jumping on me for? Just because I'm not from this block where I just moved on the block. And, you know, you see right. shootouts and gang violence and all this stuff. But then when you go out to the suburbs, you notice how the cops treat you different because you're not from the suburbs or you're not from that rich, white, upper class area. So they pull you over, throw you on the hood of the car. So that's where I experienced all that. You know, and then I started going back in my mind, like, wow, did I ever grow up like that in West Virginia? I don't remember. I don't remember growing up like that in West Virginia. Okay. That's so funny, because on, on this side, you know, me being here, and this is, I live for the capital, you know, of, of Charleston, and I did see it, you know, like, I mean, in my community, not so much, because it was a very tight-knit community family. Everybody knew everybody. Everybody went to the churches. Right. Everybody churches went to churches, so... That was no big deal. But when I went to school, it was a difference between you. You could see the difference. You know what I mean? The black people hung out by the gym. Maybe the white people hung out on the other side. And these were your heavy metal guys. And so I had experienced it myself one time. You know what I mean? I'm just going to say this real quick. And it was like, you know, like um, uh, Black History Month. And somebody had wrote the N word on, on all the bulletin boards and ripped all the heads off of Martin Luther King and like I was going to get a soda out of this machine and one of the white guys had like spit a big hawk of like tobacco spit in the hole. And they watched me like get my change out and I took my finger out and it was just like dripping like juice. And so there was some riots and stuff, you know, at this school that I went to for a period of time. But other than that, you know what I mean? My community was dope. It's just you would see it every now and again. But saying all of that, so... You're talking about, you know, growing up, you go to Detroit and all that. You 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 eventually come back to West Virginia. I read somewhere that you sang in a band or did you sing in a band or something like that? Yeah, when I came back to West Virginia, I came back right after the Y2K buzz. You know, when everybody thought the world was going to end. <laughs> yeah, when we got all the water and the batteries. And <laughs> so, you, so, you felt that, so you felt like going to West Virginia was the smart one. Okay. Please tell us about that. I mean, because in Detroit, I saw the hood crumbling. You know what Detroit looks oh, like right gosh, now. Gosh, I gosh. saw that happening. And I kept telling my friends, I was like, in, you know, 10, 15 years, this is going to be really bad. You know, and then I kept telling them about my hometown and they were just like, man, nobody want to go down there. But when I bring it down, they don't want to leave. None of them want to leave when they come down here. That's why you got right. so many Detroit people in Huntington. Oh, that's why it's called Munnington right now to this day. Munnington? <laughs> hey, it's yes. That's, and facts. You know <laughs> that's funny. So it's just like when I when that buzz hit, when that Y2K thing hit, I was just like, I'm moving back home. I, and I moved back home in like 2000. When I got here, my, my youngest brother was on his way to prison along with all of my friends that I grew up with, they had all got indicted on like a conspiracy federal charge or something for our street pharmaceuticals. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so when I, when I got here, you know, I was just trying to hang out with them a lot, but I, I just realized how much I missed home. But when I got here, it was like that, that whole crack pandemic had sure. And it was like, mm -hmm. It wasn't the same Logan County or West Virginia that I that I loved as a kid. So 
Mm -hmm. I started trying to do things positive in the community. And, you know, I started doing like a, uh, I was singing for homeless people. I was singing for the veterans. I was singing at retirement homes. I was singing for abused children, abused women and things like that. And just for like soup and sandwich, I really wasn't making no money, but I was making a name for myself. It was like God was grooming me for something bigger. I didn't see what it was, but I just realized that, you know, that I had a gift that I could be using for some positive. And so once I started doing that, I was making the front of the newspaper like every other week. And while my mm -hmm. brother was locked up, him and his cellmate was getting all the newspapers from Logan. They were actually in Beckley Correctional uh, Fed facility. And uh, mm -hmm. they was getting a newspaper. And he was just like, he asked my brother, like, who is this guy from my hometown that's always on the front of the newspaper singing Motown and Frank Sinatra? Like, and he showed it to my little brother. My brother was like, oh, that's my brother Dooney, man, because my nickname is Dooney. Dooney. Oh, okay. we got the new Dooney. Dooney. Uh oh. We got uh -oh. Dooney in the building. All right. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> was like, man, he was like, well, when we get out, I introduce you to him. So, and his cellmate happened to be, you know, a rich upper class white man. And he had like businesses and stores and everything. He just caught, got caught up in the street life, you know, and he had to do some fed time. So, when they got out, because of Barack Obama, they got out because they changed that crack law. You remember they had the law for blacks. Mm -hmm. where you can get caught with a fifty dollar rock and get twenty five to life, but you know, uh, uh, cocaine. Uh, 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 get five and years. Get, get, get caught with a kid and get a slap <laughs> on wrist. You know, so they changed that law and they let him out. He did. He was supposed to do eighty three months, but I think he did maybe like seventy of those. And oh, you know, fed you do every day, so. When he got out, he came to the house and he was like, I got to introduce you to somebody. My cellmate want to know who you are and everything. And he want to. Wow. Anyway, so when we get when he got out, we went out to his to his uh, cellmate's uh, big house. He got like this huge, almost like a mansion. I mean, his garage looked like somebody's house. You know what I'm saying? And so I go in there and, and I audition for him and I sing like. You know, Mustang Sally and some other Temptation songs for Tops and Wet Willie, Countryside of Life. And then I sing Frank Sinatra and he's like, no, nah, nobody wants to hear that. And I was like, the reason you know me is because of the Frank Sinatra. That's the reason I want right. to the newspaper. But he was like, no, nah, I want to do a blue soul band. So I said, yeah, I'll give you two years. And if it don't work, I'm going back to my one man show. So. He was true to his word. He okay. built this whole band around me. And he came to me one day later and was like, what do you want to name the band? And I said, well, if we're going to be a band, I want to be the best band. And so we got to name ourselves Top Shelf. So top we named Shelf. Our, right. we named Sound like liquor. Top okay. Shelf. We named <laughs> ourselves Top Shelf. I, I, I drink Hennessy, baby. That's it. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Is Hennessy oh. top shelf? I thought it was like mid shelf. I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, oh. Hennessy is top shelf. Bro. You talking about you talking about Crown or or VSOP or v something? Oh, VSOP is down there because I thought that was. Yeah. Right. I thought that Remy Ma was up there. NJ and uh NJ and VSOP and yeah, and stuff like that. You know that's that's that mid. I, I think that mid. Okay. Top Hennessy top, top shelf. shelf. To me. Okay, cool. Okay, there you, you go. There you go. <laughs> but I named the band Top Shelf and we went on and this is when MySpace was booming and we had a big, huge fan base and all of this stuff. And I, and I, and I, over like a year and a half, it was really huge. And I had like a whole fan page and all these fans and everything was booming. We had t-shirts, uh, merchandise, everything. But one of the band members um, from uh, Beckley, he was like a, a redneck. He was just a, a real redneck. And he didn't like me being the front man of the band because I was the only black guy in the band. And, uh, oh, wow. In a minute. I know yeah. he's wow. the blowfish. Every, even, the, even the drummers and the key, everybody? Everybody. I said that they can't play, but that's just, you know. Oh, it was great. Wow. I said it. We blew up, man. We, we did a whole lot of shows, but he just had a problem with me being the guy. He wanted his son or his nephew or somebody to be the guy. And Rick was like, if he can't gotcha. sing like if he can't sing like Landau, he's not gonna be the guy. I don't care who you bring. 
And so Rick backed me and then the guy asked Rick for maybe $47,000 or something like that to buy a house. And Rick came to me and asked me, should he give him the money? And I told him, if it's your friend, don't give him the money because you'll never get it back. And the guy quit. But at the same time, <laughs> he was the guy who was running the fan page. So he just stripped the whole MySpace page down. We couldn't get back into it and we lost all of that. So. I went back to my one man show after that. I gave him those years that I promised, you know, and I just been doing it on my own ever since. Damn. That's so crazy. that brings us to, to, to 2006. Uh, uh, oh, actually, let me go back a little bit before that. Cause you left, you came back to West Virginia, but I'm looking and 11th grade, like how do you drop out of school in 11th grade, man? Like, how do you do that? Like what uh, made you, and who allowed you? Cause I'm thinking like, you better go to school. Like, cool. Yeah, was, 11, you know? Yeah, I know your age because we the same age. And I'm like, that's 11th grade, fam. I mean, that's, that's the 90s. Uh, that's the early 90s. Yeah, but <laughs> you know what the 90s was like in Detroit? Yeah, I, listen. I, I, my main goal was to see 21. By the time I was 17, gotcha. 18 years old, half my friends was in Jackson prison or dead. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. school, was not, school was just the last thing on my mind. You know, and school was like, a, it was basically like, a, uh, to me, it was, you know, a daycare center. I would go there, spend, you know, half of the day and then come back home to my mom. Hopefully get home back to my mom. Most of my friends didn't make it back home, mm -hmm. you know, but I had a routine. I knew how to run through that gauntlet of gang <laughs> violence and gang hoods and everything. I'm a West Virginia boy, man. I know how to adapt. Jump the okay. fence. Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, and I just, I know, it was, it was just that I, I stayed in my own zone. But, but when I was in class, it wasn't, I didn't, my mind wasn't in the classroom. My mind was making money, and then figuring out how I was gonna get home. You know what I'm saying? Once I left that classroom, I seen my teacher get stabbed. I seen my teacher get shot. I went to Refford High School, bro. They closed the school down. We had a police station in the school. Oh yeah, okay. Wow. Lean on me, bro. Okay. Like real lean on me. They what about the you know <laughs> the uh the black mafia uh family? He said you got that. Yeah, uh, 50, so there was the fifty boys in Detroit. All of them, pretty Ricky. <laughs> yeah, the mafia, My, Maserati Rick. All of that was there, bro. When I was doing the school, yeah. all of that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha, so, gotcha, so, gotcha. so 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 my like question. The last thing on my mind, it was just you know I was just trying to become a man, you know, and keep my nose clean and not, you know, fall into the traps that I seen all of my other friends fall into as far as being a drug dealer or, you know, a, a thug out here on the block. I just didn't want any of that. And then I had like good mentors, like uh, Chris Weber's dad was my mentor, Macy Weber. Chris okay. Weber and me, we actually went to the same church together. I remember when he got drafted, he would come pick me up and we would go pass out school supplies to all the kids in the Smith Home Projects and other communities. That's the guy who showed me how to stay humble and, and stay grounded. You know, and I just realized once, if I ever made it, that's the way I wanted to be. You know, but wow. uh, yeah, it was just, that's I went nice. to night school I mean, I made A's in algebra. You know what I'm saying? I was never a stupid kid. I just, I daydreamed a lot about my future. And then, and it was just, like I said, it was just like my mind couldn't stay in the classroom because it was so much violence in the classroom and in between the school and getting back home. And it was just like, those were my main concerns. Mm -hmm. Thinking about my little brother because he's wild. He's in the street, so I'm like, man, am I gonna get shot because of something he did? <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Because of the community that I'm wrong from. place, wrong yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, they affiliate you with with a certain neighborhood just because you're from that neighborhood. But I'm I'm a West Virginia boy. I ain't even from that neighborhood. I just moved into it. But when I go to that <laughs> school, if 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 the Puritan Ave boys pull up or the Schoolcraft boys pull up, they assume that I'm SNS, which is the gang that was in my community. You know, but I, I learned how to talk my way out of a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of violence, you know, and I keep it pushing. I played basketball, went to church and sang songs. And that's the way I, I was like Richard Pryor when he went to prison to keep the guys off his butt. He would tell jokes. I was the dude that was singing songs and dunking on them. You know, I made people love you know, basketball courts in the playgrounds. I made the thugs love me, you know what I'm saying? But 
Gotcha. That's, I, that's how I got through it. But school was the last thing on my mind. Okay, so now you said Chris Weber's father was, was a mentor to you. Yeah. So I, I know that Chris Weber, he went to um, Country Day. And, yeah. you know, he spoke about how his father uh, always pushed education. His mother, you know, w- yeah. wanted him to go to that school versus go to the Detroit schools, per se. Um, yeah, he now, started in my- Detroit schools, but he had yeah. to go out there. He had to yeah, get away correct. From him. That's why I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm like, and they told you, yeah, we're going to drop out because now you daydreaming about I the mean, future. I mean, I seen him at church, bro. You acting like he held my hand every day and sit at my <laughs> said he, You said he was your mentor. You, he was a deacon at the church. Oh, okay. You just knew him. All right. I apologize. Yeah. I mis, was, I misunderstood what you're saying. He's like, yo, this is my mentor. He was I'm one like, oh, of okay. the many deacons. He was one of the many deacons, you know, and there was a lot of deacons at that church. Dennis Talbert, a lot, whole lot of them that were, you know, came from uh, rich backgrounds and they and they tried to steer us in the right way, but we was ghetto kids, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's how they played us. I mean, they was basically scared to pick us up most of the time because they had to come to our community to get us. But, you know, but hey. I see them at church and they would always give us words of wisdom and they, and, and they were always uh, upstanding black men in our lives. We did Harambe meetings where we would have black fathers talk to black young males and things like that with Christian rappers, Deuce of Life, the cross movement out of Philly and everywhere. I mean, we did all of this stuff and they they tried to steer us all in the right direction. I think they steered me right. well. I'm doing very good with all the stuff that they taught me. You know, it was just like I had to go back and and, and do my school part over. But as far as being an upstanding citizen, I, I think I've done really well. Okay. So after you moved back to West Virginia from Detroit and you see everyone getting locked up, what was your motivation then? My motivation was to change my environment and, you know, and do something better with my life, you know, um, especially with the kids. It was just like, I just knew how beautiful it was here when I was a kid. I mean, Mm -hmm. very free. You would play in the the hills, you play in the creeks and everybody was just fun. And you was always outside until it was dark, you know, but now kids aren't even outside anymore. They ain't even riding their dirt bikes no more. It was just, it was just, that flipped my mind. I was just like, what is going on? This is like right. paradise and they treating it like it's nothing. Like, I just think people take it for granted, you know, how how, how good we have it here. Okay. So I wanted to change that. I wanted to show them that, you know, you can go outside and, and just be a kid and just grow up, you know, instead of trying to grow up so fast. Hey, that's, and that's back too, because, you know, I'm from here and then I moved from West Virginia trying to get out. You know, I want to do something different. West Virginia doesn't have this and that. And you do get the negative rap like, oh, you West Virginian and you, you like your cousin and your daddy and that whole yeah. thing they tried to say or whatever. But growing up as a kid, you know, when I moved out of town and I would see like seven-year-olds catching the bus to school or yeah. 11-year-old and you already got the key and you just got to go home and cook to your mom, go home. And I seen another side and I didn't, and me and my husband, because he's, you know, from Jersey. And so I would have the, and I'd be like, why would they send that kid on the bus? But to them, it's just the way of life too. It's just mama got to work, yeah. you get on the bus. But to me, it was like, how dare you put the kid on the bus and he's eight years old with a key right. to get yeah. home. You know I what I mean? Like that. It was, a, it was a culture shock for me. You know what I mean? Coming from West Virginia and then leaving and seeing something else. So I get it when you're saying here growing up, there was no, I don't even think we locked our doors. I don't even think we yeah. locked the car. Yeah. I don't even think my mom even, even had a house key. You, know right. you just, you just went from house to house and block to block and everybody knew everybody. And so that was, that was a good thing and your you know, about said, being yeah. there. <laughs> absolutely. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. So moving forward, we're going 2006. How did you even think about, you know, going to America's Got Talent? Like, where did that come up? Where your audition? Where did you audition? Uh, this is not 2006. This is actually in 2006. I went to Vegas. I went to Vegas. Okay. Uh, and I, I went out there just to hang out with my brothers because they had all just got out of prison and we were just like celebrating. So we all went to Vegas. It's about 17 of us. My cousins, wow. my brothers, all of us. I went out there with a hundred dollars in my pocket and I played blackjack at the Tropicana and I won $10,500. 
So I, I, I buy all this nice stuff and then I, I go to the stage and I see an open mic and I get up on the stage and just start singing and the whole casino stopped. And this guy comes out the back room and gave me this car. I was like, you need to come work for us. But I was just like, yeah, whatever. So I leave, come back to West Virginia. And then when, while I'm doing my little one man show and doing all this charity in the community, somebody robbed my house. They went in the house, took all the copper out of the walls, all my furniture, all my clothes, everything. So now I'm mad and I'm like, okay, since they want to do that to me, my Detroit mentality kicked in and I'm like, I'm just going to rob every drug dealer that comes. To <laughs> no. Every drug no. dealer that comes to Logan County, I'm going to rob them. Who are they going to tell? You can't tell nobody. Wow. I got guns. I got guns. Okay, we want to do it like that. Let's do it like that. And but wow. then, you know, God spoke to me right there at that moment. He was like, no, you've lost everything because you got so much else to gain. All you need is a bigger stage. Now, this whole time of my mm. life, from Bugs Bunny, all the way doing all the shows, doing the band, doing everything that I'd done up to that point, was just grooming me. He was getting me ready for something that most people have to pay to learn. I learned it just by life. And once I got to that point, I was just like, wow, I'm sitting there with tears in my eyes and I'm mad, but then the tears dried up and I was just like, you right, God. I have nothing to lose and everything to gain right now. And I do need a bigger stage. And then right at that moment, I was sitting in the room at my mom's house and the TV went to a commercial. And it was Howie Mandel. And he said, are you the next one of America's Got Talent? Do you have what it takes to headline your own show in Vegas? Are you a million dollar prize winner? I am talking to you. And when he came <laughs> out, oh, I was like, really happy? Yeah. And right. it, was, it all clicked. And I was like, wow, that's the bigger stage. And so I went into the other room, signed up on the computer, waited for like two weeks for a confirmation email. They emailed me back and told me to wait for a phone call. When they called my house, the woman that I was with hung the phone up, click. They called back and was like, ma'am, please don't hang up. We're looking for Orlando Eugene Murphy Jr. This is America's Got Talent. <laughs> she started screaming, I run into the other room. I get on the phone. They asked me how I want to do my audition. I could submit a video or I could come to several different states. In my mind, I already know I'm going to do Frank Sinatra. So where do you do Frank Sinatra at? New York, Chicago, or Vegas? I'm going to New York, says the hat. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to New York. I went to New York. I got there. I, I waited in line from like five... I guess 5.45 a.m. to about 7.30 by the time I got into the Jacob Javits Center. And then I waited for another three hours to get to my audition. When I auditioned for the uh, the regular judges, this is not the celebrity judges yet, this is just to see who has enough talent to be on the show. And right. so when I auditioned for them, I walk into the room and it's a whole bunch of people in there waiting to audition just like me. And uh, I, I wanted to go last because I wanted to see how everybody's going to audition, but they actually called me first. And I had my 90 second instrumental of the song that I was going to sing and they didn't have the audio machine in the room for me to do it. So I sat back down. They was just like, don't worry about it. We'll have it down here in a minute. We're going to let all the rest of these people audition real quick. We'll get right back to you. So I sit there and I had my chance to watch and I watched everybody audition. And everybody's up there singing like somewhere over the rainbow. You know, they just <laughs> fidget in their pockets. They ain't got no wow Pizzazz, no flavor, no A lot of them have great voices, but they don't have no stage presence. Now, mind you, I've been doing this since I was a kid. I got all the stage presence in the world. <laughs> when I walk into a room, it's like bang, you know, so. After that, they was like, okay, Mr. Murphy, you're up next. Oh, that's right. You have an audio. Can you wait for a second? I was like, don't worry about it. I'll do it acapella. Because I done seen these people do what they did. I was like, I, can <laughs> I don't even need it. <laughs> so I get up and I do mine. And they start shuffling through paperwork like, bloody hell, where have you been? 
where did you come from? How old are you? And blah, blah, blah. And I told him who I was, but I went on the show as Dooney Tunes because I was going to do Frank Sinatra in New York. Then when I got to Vegas, I was going to do Nat King Cole. So you was going to travel until you got on. Okay. And nobody, because they they take you through different places when you when you do these auditions. You start off in New York, but then you make it to Vegas week, and then you make it to the live rounds in Hollywood. So what I was gonna yeah, be doing these tunes because I know all these different tunes. I was gonna start off with Frank Sinatra, in New York. When I got to Vegas, I was gonna do um, Nat King Cole. When I got to mm-hmm. Hollywood, I was gonna do Marvin Gaye, Temptations, Stevie Wonder, and then end off on my way. But once they heard my name, it was like Dooney Tunes. That sounds a lot like Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes, yeah. Like, yeah, you're right, but it's different. I mean, my nickname is Dooney, and I sing all the tunes. And they was like, yeah, but what's your real name? And they, I was like, Landau Eugene Murphy Jr. And they was like, oh, my gosh, that's brilliant. That's your name? And I was like, yes. <laughs> my whole life in Detroit, I've been bullied and talked about and teased about having a being name Landau. like Landau. <laughs> yeah, being Landau Eugene Murphy Jr. was crazy. And that was, you know, people of my color that just dog my name ever since I was a kid, you know, when I was in Detroit. You know, a lot of bullies and a lot of people just picking on me about it. But, you know, these these people loved my name. They loved my name so much that they was like, just keep that and then just do Frank Sinatra. You do Frank Sinatra, and I think you have a chance at at being great. And I was just like, all right. And so I stuck with that. You know, and, and and never went to actually win the show. I was just trying to get my wheels out of the mud from being robbed. As far as I thought was, you know, I'll get on TV. I'll have my 15 seconds of fame. Some record label will come right, up, right. Or, or I'll be on the love boat. The love boat. You know, that's <laughs> as far as I thought of it, you know. But God had another plan. And I ended up winning the whole show. And, and, and here I am today. Okay. So when you... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh. I have several questions. So now, yeah. during this time period, what what job or occupation you were doing? Doing what? What job or occupation were you doing prior to you getting the opportunity at uh, America's Got Talent? Oh, plenty. Right. I worked for uh, right. uh, Swites, a galvanizer. I was making, you know, like $25 an hour, and I was operating a 10-ton crane, and, and then I had a... Uh, I was driving forklifts and things like that. And then I worked at Shoney's. I worked at Bob Evans. I worked at, you know, Steakhouse. And then when I got back to West Virginia, you know, I worked at all of those little places like that. But then I actually started working for Jack Whitaker, the guy who hit the Powerball for like $319 million. Got you. I started, I started working for him at Diversified Enterprise, and I was a, a, a construction worker. I was a concrete I didn't finish. know that. Okay. Yeah, I was making $33 an hour. And then when Jack Whitaker got in all that trouble with Hooters and all right. that stuff, yeah, yeah. Uh, he laid a lot of us off and I got laid off, but I was making like $818 a week on unemployment. And then I started working for a Mike Farrell Toyota detailing cars. Mm-hmm. In, Detroit. in my background in Detroit, I was working for Chrysler up there you know, detailing cars for the Detroit Auto Show and things like that. And uh, so I started doing the detail thing again. And and it was great because it gave me the freedom to focus on my craft, focus on my music. I bought a whole bunch of studio equipment with the money that I made from Jack Whitaker, $33 an hour. I bought a whole lot of CDs and I was doing a one-man karaoke thing for the Reno Steakhouse and for the... uh, front room steakhouse and the guy actually passed away and then his daughters took over the company and they wanted to just give me $50 a day instead of $200 a day. Which you was making, right. And so I, I, that's when I just, you know, I left that alone and, and did my whole thing with America's Got Talent. Okay. Now the reason why is because we, we took a huge jump, but I know that has to be a process from 11th grade, I drop out of school, what? then I go to West mm-hmm. Virginia. Then I get robbed. I'm like, no, there's a process somewhere. And my little brother in the game. Right. So now my question is, your little brother, does he follow in your footsteps or he was just an outlier? No, my brother is, uh, he was actually going to, he was in the Top Chef band with me, but, you know, he's a street guy. 
And so, but, you know, he's a natural born hustler, but I gave him a lot of great ideas. And, and now he owns a Granny Jack's restaurant. He has a food truck. He has a, a tree cut. That's here in West Virginia? Yeah. Here in West Virginia? Okay. Here in West Virginia. He's doing good, man. He kept his his, his uh, nose out of the streets and he, he owns a restaurant. And my other brother has a car wash now that I was working at. He ended up buying that car wash and then bought the one next to it. And they okay. bought all the property up that whole street. And, you know, my mom is living with it right there. And, you know, I bought my brother a house and he took the house, stripped it down, remodeled it, add like three bedrooms onto it. I mean, they're just doing great. Question, you bought <laughs> your, your brother a house? Yeah. Wait a minute. From That's America. great. No, 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 no. Because, see, I don't know the time. Because now, oh. you know, like, what is this? If you said that, after, or you, after, after America, after, 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 I bought my brother a house. Okay, got you. See, yeah. if you talk about like, nah, I dropped out of school and then I brought my brother a house, I'm like, hold on. Hold yeah, on. he's a timeline guy. He like, he like, he's a teacher. He like we order. Was, order he was jumping and around and I'm sitting place. there like. I mean, the common <laughs> sense knows that I was supposed to graduate in 1992. Bro, this yeah. is 2000. Yeah, 1993. It was 2011 when I got down. Correct. So, so now, he, for me, I was trying to, like, fill in that gap because, for instance, okay, cool, you're on America Got Talent, but we trying to get to know you. So it's like, yo, tell us the journey. So I'm going to go on a trip with you like I'm watching a movie. And so now when you talk about, all right, cool, I went to Detroit, then I went back home to uh, West Virginia, and Who's now that? it's like, yeah, so you went to West Virginia in 2000. Yeah, I came back here in 2000. 2000. Brother, right. he was a That's full That's what he said, Y2K. <laughs> yeah, That's what I right. said. That's yeah. what I said. Yeah. I'm from 11 2000. to 2000. Correct. Yep. So now you're talking right. about from the age of, you know, 13, 14, starting high school, and then moving. So I understand that, because, like, I actually had to go to a different one because getting in trouble. So now they say, all right, you go to this high school, go over here because you was getting in trouble. And then it's like, all right, I got to go somewhere else because I might have been getting in trouble. But now it's like, all right, I got to get my life together. Maybe somebody you saw, you know, some mess up situation, which you did explain. Now, the other question is, you know, America got talent. And now we, we're talking about your family's doing well. So I uh, assume that they are um, self-sufficient and they could do for self. So what oh, is yeah. the next plans for your you know, your career after America's Got Talent? Uh, well, after winning America's Got Talent, I headlined Caesars Palace for a year, you mm -hmm. know, and then I opt out of that contract because in the contract of America's Got Talent, they, they tell you that, um, you know, you get a million dollars, which you get that, and then you get a record deal with Sony Columbia Records, which I got that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I had the option of keeping it going. So my album came out, it debuted at number one on the Billboard's Jazz chart for like 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Along with uh, battling uh, Adele, Frank Sinatra, and what's that guy's name? Um, Tony Bennett, Nat oh. King Cole. Oh, Tony so I'm King battling Bennett. them for like 12 to 14 weeks. I was number one on the jazz charts. And okay. then it's just like after making that album at Capitol Records, you know, I go and Is do that the That's Life album? The That's Life album? That's Life album, yes. Okay. And then I was supposed to stay in uh, Caesars Palace for a year, but in the contract it says you get the million dollars, you get the record deal, and you have your own show in Las Vegas. But I didn't feel like it was my own show. Why? Because when I got there, they brought back the same acts that I just beat on the show and made them perform too. Oh, oh. So they did the, um, that's the model for the other show on the other network. Don't want to really get them airtime, but that's what they do. They take all the people who didn't win and then they put them all together. I got you. Yeah, I was just like, this is like doing a That ain't my show. show. It's right. not my show. If it's my right. show, I, I should be able to call you and be like, hey, you want to come play the drums with me this weekend? I got a flight. That's right. Room, everything. Uh, that's my show. Right. You know, but right. they had me like right back on stage with these same people. And I was just like, and it just felt like I was, you know, tied to a chain. And I didn't like feeling like that. It started taking the the feeling of wanting to sing songs out of me. It was like they were stripping me of my soul. And I didn't <laughs> right. like that. You know? That was my question. Because uh, I'm looking through your whole 
your whole, all the dates you got coming up and all the stuff. Like, do you ever get tired? Like, okay, I'm tired of singing. I want to chill. Because you got a lot of dates and a lot of things that you're doing. Have you ever got to that point since that? Like, it's a lot. No, nah, this is what I was born, okay. born to do. And I'm a people person. So I love being on stage. It, it's like uh, me battling all the fears that I've ever had, you know, as a kid. When I'm on stage, mm-hmm. I'm battling every bully that ever told me that I wasn't good enough. But how do you how do you do that though? How do you for everybody who's afraid to do what you do it, even just coming from West Virginia, like how do you click your mind to be like, oh, I'm from here, but I'm gonna make because a lot of people got talents, but they don't always make it to a certain level. You know, yeah. to be in Vegas, that's big. Like, how do you, you know, what is your process, you know, with you staying focused? My process is, you know, uh, I feel my sweaty palms. I feel my sweaty palms. I feel the butterflies in my stomach, and I know it's go time. And then I turn that fear into power. So when I get on stage, it makes me perform. It makes me move. If I didn't feel those things, I think I would just be bored with it. You know, so you never want to become jaded. Once you become jaded, it's when you just out there and you just know that you're the, the bomb. No, I don't think I'm the bomb. I can mess up at any time but I don't rehearse anything. I go out there so that fear stays in my gut. So I don't know what's gonna happen during the show. I don't know if somebody in the audience is gonna say the wrong thing and I gotta have a, a quick response, you know, but all of those fears is what keeps me going. So have you, did you ever want to like, you know, open up something like that here in West Virginia, like school or something? I know you have a scholarship. There's a Landau scholarship. Can you tell us about that yeah. first? Even? Yeah, the Landau Scholarship is, you know, for people of color like myself uh, from rural areas and minorities and, you know, just to help you further your education if you dropped out of high school, mostly for adults who dropped out just like myself, you know, and and trying to go back to school, you know, and uh, as far as, uh, and I have a doctorate in music from the University of Charleston, you know, but I I really really want to... uh, open up a school for fine arts and things like that to just mentor kids to never give up on their dreams. You never know what journey they're gonna take, but at least you can try to plant that seed. So yeah, in my future, I plan on doing something like that. It needs uh, it, and it really does need it around yeah. here. It really does. You have a lot of talent. So much talent around here. Yeah, but the exposure's not there, the education's not there, and you, a lot of people leave, and so when you leave, there's nothing else here. See, here's the thing that the world doesn't understand. Mostly everything that you've seen on TV growing up came from these areas, came from Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, and West Virginia. Three's, com- uh, Three's no Company, idea. Steve Harvey, T.D. Jakes, everybody that... They're that you- Think of the the NBA logo came from West Virginia, bro. Jerry West. <laughs> Jerry West. He's right. He's okay. right. He's right. I got you. <laughs> everybody, right. you know, right. everybody. Right. Andy Griffin show. Don Knotts. Everybody, man. Yeah, Gilligan, I actually went to that. Andy Griffin is North Carolina. Gillian from Gilligan's Island came from West Virginia. Oh, the people. Okay, got you, got you. Got you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All the people that you've seen yeah. in Hollywood and on TV. Most of the biggest stars that you know came from these areas. Okay. That's a perspective. You know, like, I'm not good with history, so I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Because now it's like Steve Harvey from West Virginia. I, I, he claimed Ohio, but I got you. He's from West Virginia. He, no, he is from West Virginia. I didn't know that. I'm not denying that. I didn't know that. that. You know, T.D. Like, Jakes, right. Jakes is from West Virginia. Yes, he says yep. it. He says it quite often. Absolutely. But, but like, it's like, okay. If a person from Detroit would actually hear you say that, they would look at you like, oh, yo, fam, you from Detroit. You know what we got. You hit city over here. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, talking about, I'm talking, I'm talking about, I'm talking about all over the world icons. Yeah. We the Franklin. She's from Detroit. She's a singer though. That's music again. I got you. I'm talking you. about one thing. I'm talking about people that's it's overall right. Okay, I got you. 
I remember having a discussion about this, um, something similar in, in basketball. And I was talking about like how many people came from New Jersey. And I was like, you know what? You know, some of the best players, they all came from Jersey because they play high school ball because we got the best high school ball of rap. Right? Nah, never. It, now watch this, right? So at first it was like, what? Man, New York got all this, blah, 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 blah. I said, yo, they all had to play high school ball in Jersey, right? Yeah. And then when I start really <laughs> looking at it, right? Gilbert Marina said, Yo, all the real ballers, and if you superstars, you're coming from the West Coast and the Deep South. And I'm like, that don't even sit right in my brain. But when he said it, you start running off people that's in the NBA and doing extremely well. That's what I'm they saying. They were. But when you start making those statements, it's like you're picking the choose. He get a little itchy. That was this. You can also say, yo, the biggest bums come from there, too. <laughs> so that's why I stepped back and was like, I'm not doing that. That ain't no big bum. What? <laughs> like, like, so, so that's why I was like, eh, I got you. You got some people, and you know they big it up and everything. Because um, I know a couple of people um, from Tennessee as well as Ohio. My family, you know, historically is from Ohio, but I ain't yeah. claiming it. I'm. I think I've been to Ohio one time. <laughs> I got. You know what I, mean? I like Ohio. I like Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's like super, right. super, Ohio, super Alabama, duper Alabama, awesome. Atlanta. Everywhere. Yeah. I got family everywhere. Detroit, Atlanta, yeah. Ohio, Tennessee, Kentucky. Yeah, but now now when you say like West Virginia, and now there's that doesn't have too much exposure. Now my question becomes, why not? Because now it's like everyone's on an even playing field if you have talent because it's because of what she said. It's because of what she just said. When we grow up, they try to tell you that you have to get away from here. And now all the people from West Virginia that have power, they live in New York and they live in California. What do you mean? That's where they live. You move. A, a lot of people don't don't stay. You know, they a lot of people there. leave. They're actually <laughs> they trying to pay people to move back to West Virginia now. But no, I understand. There's there opportunity. Of, Y'all said that. Right. Right. Yeah, right. There's no opportunity that, here. And then the people who do that that are here, sometimes you don't always get that support that you need. You know, to keep it going, it may last for a while, but it's you know you don't always have the support. So there is a lot of talented people, but they go. Like I left, I didn't want to come back. You know what I mean? But I by default, I ended back. I always wanted to leave, but when I left, I like having the balance. Though I like having the upbringing here, but I do like having the experiences from other places because it just makes you more balanced. You exactly. know what I mean? And real and realistic. And cause you can too. live in West Virginia and you can be unrealistic like the rent is like 700 but then you go somewhere else and pay 14 you like for what yeah what, for that exactly. well, yeah when i can pay you know what i mean so you think of that so i'm gonna move a little forward on it so you did finally um it's the never too late to graduate you did it man you finally got your high school diploma after all these years i seen the billboard when i was driving on the highway <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. So, so how was that? Did you feel like weird going back, or you know, did you go actually go to school? Did you do it online, or uh, I did both. I went to school and online. I went to like a a place called the Ralph Technical uh, Facility here in uh, Logan County, and I actually did edgenuity.com. And uh, the biggest part of getting over was this, just the embarrassment of it. And that's right. another thing with that fear. I mean, we let fear stop us from doing so many things. Worrying about what somebody else is going to say about you. Mm -hmm. And that's right. what I had to get over. I, was, I, don't, mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to turn off ESPN. I'm going to turn off the Netflix and YouTube. And it was the pandemic time. It was I had all the downtime in the world. I've been touring for 10 years straight into this pandemic. You know, so it was just like. Once the pandemic hit, I sat back, smelled the roses, looked around, was like, okay, I'm bored. I'm sitting here just not doing nothing. I'm going back to school. And I went back to school and I graduated, you know, and now I'm you know, ambassador of adult education across the whole state of West Virginia, you know? Absolutely. That's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, Moving the things along, moving forward, is there anywhere that you haven't performed that you want to perform? Like you haven't hit the stage yet, but you have this goal somewhere in the world. Is it still somewhere you still want to go that you have? Uh, Ronnie Scott's over in London. Where's that? I said oh, London. London. Yeah, I want to do Ronnie Scott's, and I'm actually on deck to do a Dubai. And once I do cool. those, 
You know, uh, I've been everywhere in the United States except for Montana and Iowa. Almost all 50 states. And I haven't done Hawaii or Alaska. What about Wembley? uh, Wembley Stadium. Wembley Stadium. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I, I, I never, I mean, Doing Madison Square Garden was enough for me as far as stadiums are concerned or, or arenas. When I did Madison Square Garden and then I did the Super Bowl thing when the Giants won, the New York Giants played with the Patriots, I was there with Madonna. Yeah. I did the halftime party for that. And, uh, you know, I mean, that was amazing to me. I, and then and then doing the, uh, the Lakers games and doing the Miami Heat games and uh Oklahoma City Thunders games. I just feel like I've done all of those. And and now, like I said, I just want to go to Ronnie Scott's and I want to go to Dubai. I've been to Germany. I've been to Shanghai, China. And guess what? The people who ran the arenas in Germany and in Shanghai, China are from Parkersburg, West Virginia. Parkersburg, West Virginia. The owners of Wembley Stadium? No, the people who no. run the arenas. Oh, Reddit. Okay. I- they're from wow. West Virginia. Michael Craig Enoch. He runs the Mercedes Benz Arena in Shanghai, China, bro. This is crazy. From Parkersburg? Parkersburg. Wow. And that's like I said, everywhere that I go, all around the world that I've been, I've always run into West Virginia. I did the biggest fair in California, which is the Sacramento State Fair, right? The California mm-hmm. State Fair or whatever. First three rows are all West Virginians with I love West Virginia and Landau across their t-shirt. <laughs> First three <laughs> rows of people, all, you know, as big as you can look, wide this way, this way, three rows back. All West Virginians. Okay. I go to Germany, it's the same thing. I go to Shanghai, it's the same thing. And it's just cool. like- that that Now, the that's question cool. is, cool. when you go to Detroit, what are they gonna do? When I, I, yeah, it's a lot of West Virginians in Detroit. It's a lot of uh, people. I got family, a lot of West Virginia, from West Virginia that moved to Detroit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I have relatives in Detroit. It's a lot of West Virginians and people from Alabama in Detroit and Atlanta. That's what I learned as I was growing up. Oh, okay, right? I got it. You said people from Alabama, West Virginia, and Detroit. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of okay. people from West Virginia, people from Atlanta, and people from Alabama all moved to Detroit for, so I guess, for the car industry or something. Correct. Yeah, Back when I was was yeah right. Chicago is like Mississippi and Alabama would assume it's Detroit. I got you. So now yeah. my question is when you go to Detroit, did they say Detroit's own or did they say West Virginia? Oh, you know, I, I, still, I, I still represent Detroit when I go there. I actually okay. played, I opened okay. up for the Temptations right before the, the last two died. I opened up for them at the old Pine Knob. It's called the DTE or something like that, or DET or something. DTE? Yeah. It used to be the old Pine Knob in Pontiac. But you know, I opened up for them and they showed me love, man. I had all my all my Detroit stories of growing up in, you know, over off uh schoolcraft and evergreen and you know, telling about my high school days. And it's all funny to me, you know, all the bad stuff that I went through up there and even back home, it's all comedy to me because I made it through it. So I can also I can talk about it and make you smile about it. It's not something that I want you to feel sympathy for. It's something that, right. that give you some enlightenment on which paths to take or how to maneuver do those things without losing your brain. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's, that's the thing that I want to, you know, put out to everybody is that, you know, your good times and your bad times make you who you are. You don't have to just dwell on your bad times or, and then put yourself in the slump. You don't have to do that. You got to pick right. yourself up. You learn the lesson and move forward. Okay. And so Absolutely. now my question is, from that which you've learned, when is the book coming out? The book is being out. The book is yeah, out. Yeah, actually, I wrote that. I, I wrote I that down no somewhere. Number one seller like on it. Amazon. Number one seller on Amazon. I won five awards for that book. Say the name. Say the name for everybody, please. It's, the name uh, of your book. It's from Washing Cars to Hollywood Stars. Landau Eugene Murphy Jr. I from did see Wash- that. From Washing Cars to Hollywood Stars. It's got the Mother's All Choice right. Award and the Indy Award, everything. Look, gotcha. he's looking it up. Look, gotcha. I'm looking at his gotcha. stuff. You know, you know that it has all his, his songs, his letter. That's why I was like, 
They just had his albums and singles and song has discography, but it does not say about any books. I didn't read that. I did. I did read that. But that's what I'm saying. I'm going to be learning. Matter of fact, yeah. I got one right here. Matter of fact, check this out. Okay. Bam. In your face. Right here on crossbars. Make sure y'all pick it up. Yo, why From watching cards. Love Yo, that. Right I have there, to look, get that. You look like Randy Moss right there, man. That's what everybody <laughs> say. Yeah, okay. I, I like. I don't know. I, that book. I was like, yo, I, I ain't trying to say all black people look like. I ain't that person. Randy, <laughs> Randy, my dude, man. I play basketball. With about, man. Okay. That's what I was about to <laughs> say. Dude, have you man. mad? Have you mad? And we trying to get him on crossbars too. So he's coming up, Randy. We coming for you. Uh, yeah, Randy, Randy's <laughs> cool, man. We do a lot of charity stuff together here in the state where we go out and play basketball with some uh, juvenile delinquents and some state yeah. members and things like that. Randy is funny, man. I threw what Randy an alley oop from half court and he dunked it backwards. I think he tapped it off the backboard and then dunked it backwards. Yeah, what, wow. Williams, he, he, he played with him, so I'm thinking he, he, Jay Williams. Yeah, he, he Jay Williams. Yeah, he's I, met, I met his mom. I've never met Jason. I never met Jason, but I met his mom. His mom comes to some of my shows out in North Carolina. I think that's where his mom lives at now. But she came to a couple of my shows when I was out in North Carolina and told me a whole bunch okay, of stuff. Okay, wait a minute. I'm in North Carolina now and I'm in the Queen City. So what part of North Carolina were you performing at? Uh New Bern. Oh wow, you on the coast. Okay. That's different. Yeah. New Bern, uh Fed How was it? Bern. How were you received in New Bern? This Great, sold out shows every time I go there. And then I did, I, I opened up for the Commodores in Fayetteville. Okay, so that that's looks like awesome, man. Yeah, ever, 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 got, ever, ever got, ever got, ever got starstruck when you see these people? You ever get stuck when you, you meet a celebrity? No, the only celebrities I ever wanted to meet was Marvin Gaye, Michael Jordan, and Michael Jackson. Okay, so two of them, that's a wrap. But, <laughs> you know, um, are you, have you ever came close to beating Michael Jordan? Cause. Uh, while I was in Detroit, um, working for Chrysler, one of the guys, one of the head guys had a, uh, he had two tickets to a Bulls Pistons basketball game at the palace. Oh God. And he came to me cause he knew I was a big Jordan fan. I mean, I should draw pictures for him of Michael Jordan and, and oh, give him, him, he hung him up on the walls and everything. But he came to me, he was like, man, I got these two tickets, but me and my family are going on vacation. I can't use, them. I want you to have floor seats. Mm. Palace of Arbor Hill, Chicago Bulls versus the Pistons. Michael Jordan <laughs> retires this night, bro. What? Oh, wow. Remember, before, he was supposed to play that last game in the Palace, but he did. He retired and didn't come to Detroit. Yeah, he knew what they did. He knew what they did. <laughs> Michael Jordan, I love saying this to Jordan fans. Michael Jordan is arguably the third best player in the history. So, you know. What? Yeah. Third? <laughs> no, 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 no. I love doing that to Jordan he fans. I love. Yeah, he, I love he's starting that. something now. There he goes. He's starting uh, something. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I said it. And his stats to prove it, too. No, bro. Yeah, I know, I know. The no, no, I got some questions for you. I'm, I'm only, gonna... person, only player that I think that would have been better than Michael Jordan was Lynn Bias. All right, man. I, it, it was no more. Let me hear him. Yeah, yeah, no, go, go ahead. Listen, you know, sing, like, listen, listen, we all got our faults. You yeah. sing, so your strong one is not talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> he yeah. thinks he's a sports the only Wizards person is. that I think that would have been better than Michael Jordan is Lynn Bias if he was well, not. Well, he didn't even get a chance. He didn't even. He Lynn Bias had three years he, against Joe, actually, been. two, when he was in college in the ACC. And Lynn Bias was right. getting with Jordan. But Jordan only has one national championship, and he played three years in college. So the last two. And when he won his national championship, he wasn't even the man. That was James Worthy. But that's a whole other story. You know what I could do. I don't yeah, know yeah. what I the beginning of the goat leg. Beginning, beginning of nah, nah. <laughs> Bro, beginning of Nike. Finish it, finish it. <laughs> <laughs> so no, look, that's why I know get a like person who learns like Jordan. Just tell him like, yeah, he like the second best, but I can put it real hard. He the third best. No, yeah, yeah you about to you about to fight on that one. No, no, no. The reason why I say that is because statistics. No, I, and I love and I love what he does. I'm here in Charlotte, and some of the things that he does now. 
people don't give him credit for. Like for rest is he's hired so many uh, African American people in yeah. the Spectrum Center and in the um, the Charlotte Hornets organization and position of power, and that's getting unrecognized. Now, some people who are in the know, they kind of be like, yo, it's a lot of chocolate people in suits around here <laughs> where before we were the janitors or we were the talent on the floor. Yeah, so, but the reason they're doing that now and they're not recognized is because of his past. Back in right. the Jordan's past, he was too busy to, and he was too caught up in that whole life to actually, you know, jump on this bandwagon or big, because then you lose these fans, you lose those fans, or you know, you gain these fans and then lose those. So he had to play the game. 22. You know, I, he had to I, he had to play that game. I understand and, that. And I, now he's I'm making sorry. up for it. And like you said, they ain't even recognizing. Him. Listen. Come on, give him a break. Well, listen, because 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 <laughs> of how old he is, he's a little older than us. We grew up watching yeah. him. So he had a first row view of Ali and seeing exactly. how Ali is respected because of what he went through. And that's why I don't really appreciate some of the things that he didn't take stands on. So yeah. as far as that concerned, I understand. And then me, I can't speak on that because if someone says, all right, you can make this stand to make $700,000, which is beautiful and a whole more than I ever say, or you could not take this stand <laughs> five billion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. You know, it's not too many people saying, I'm going to take the stand $700,000. Like, yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> if I was in that, in that situation, could I be like, nah, I'm going to take the Jim Brown route. You know, nah, we got to stand <laughs> on something. And then he'd be like, nah, I'm going to take the magic route because, you know, and the reason why I use Jordan Magic because Craig Hodges actually brought these points up of like, look, let's stop all the violence that's happening in Detroit and Chicago and uh, LA and New mm -hmm. York. And when we go right. to the president, we're going to pre present him. And, you know, I know I'm an NBA player speaking about what Craig Hodges spoke about on, on his interview. And right. he came to Magic and Joy and said, but it'll be way more powerful if you guys are a part of it. And they like, Please, <laughs> like, I ain't messing up my paper. <laughs> Look, I ain't messing my paper up dealing with your craziness. But at exactly. the same time, watch this. We all seen that that picture with Jabbar. We saw Jim Brown. We saw Ernie Davis. We saw we see all um, Bill Russell. We saw yeah. all of them take that iconic picture when they all said, "No, we standing together in solidarity with right. black athletes." But right. we also hold them in different reverence now because of the stance that they took, you know, when it wasn't popular. So we all have recognized it. So if you are a person in in a certain position and you take these stance, you know on the back end, your legacy is straight, but at the same time, you know. I mean, but even at the time when they took that stand, they was only making, well, 25,000 again. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> but think about what average black people were making because that was still, Far what they would think about the minimum wage in the 1960s. We yeah. talk about cents, right? <laughs> you know, we talk about cents, right. not even dollars. You're right. You're right. You're right. So you said twenty five thousand, like that wasn't no, that was a large amount, man. You could buy a house for twelve, yeah, <laughs> and it'd be decent. I mean, you could so, buy a Mustang for twenty five hundred dollars back then. Facts, and, right, and now, right. okay. so so you know, put it in proper perspective. So that's why I say that, but. Nevertheless, that's a sports conversation. I can talk all day. But now let's talk about <laughs> you a little bit more because now I just found I got a book, so we've got some reading to do. And now yeah. we're talking about in 2021 and beyond because the year's almost over. You know, do you got mm -hmm. a holiday do you got a holiday um CD coming out? Cause you know, Christmas time coming and you're talking yeah, about Yeah, I, I already done that. It's called Christmas Made for Two, man. And it's well, yeah. well what's that mean? Christmas made for two. Christmas made for two. Well, if you got four people or five like like over two, like I don't understand. I'm, I'm, I'm confused right now. Like, you just said two, like, wait. oh, so Christmas is only for lovers? Yeah, that's it. That's oh, it. oh, that's it. Oh, okay. We got a family. It. Okay, put the kids to bed and make like, look. Right. All, right. All right, listen, because because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a flex on you a little bit. You know what I mean? He had the West Virginia. You got the West Virginia co-host. Yeah, Frank Sinatra's whole book in New Jersey. Stand up. Huh? Huh? Hey, yeah, I'm Marshall. No I'm Marshall. I'm Marshall though. I'm Marshall. I'm Marshall. Yeah, yeah. I'm see, Marshall. See, Still West Virginia, but I'm in you. Wait, wait, wait. I'm in you. How, wait, he said Huntington. Is it? Honey, Huntington is Marshall University. Marshall. Yes, he, yes. He, he got a West Virginia that. flag. Isn't that a no-no? If I believe. No. No. He got a West Virginia flag <laughs> in Huntington. Big brother. It, 
No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I don't understand. He's a big brother he has right a West Virginia flag. Confused. You confused. He has a West Virginia West... flag in Huntington. He's not in Huntington. Oh, I'm in Morgantown oh, oh. right now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. right. Okay, you're in Morgantown now. I'm now, in my Morgantown. question is, yeah. But didn't he just that's say a... you grew up in Huntington? No. No, I grew up in Logan. That's where Deep Logan. That's where Deep Logan, right? But you said Detroit. A lot of people come to Huntington and from Detroit, you know, okay. in the area. Right. They it's move to you know, Huntington. It's Huntington. It's called Huntington. It's called it Huntington. Huntington. And they start coming down because of you, correct? Because I heard what you said. Because you know you no, start no. bringing them down there. Uh, no, like, I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> I said some I'm of my friends. I said some of my friends mm -hmm. are from Detroit, and when they mm -hmm. got here, they did not want to go back, and that's a fact. They, and, they, yeah, and, they, yeah. and they came down, and they renamed it Munnington, huh? Oh, it was already <laughs> called Munnington. It was oh. already Munnington. Oh. Ask her; she grew up there. Money. I did. I, I went to school. I went to Marshall down there. So when I moved to Huntington to go to school to Marshall, and when I was there. You know, Randy was there, Jason Williams was there, Chad Pennington was there. When I was at Marshall, they were all there at the same time. So that was a yeah. nice little era. But I, I understand all that. But we're going to move it along. We're going to start wrapping it up, though, Landau, because we don't want to keep all of your time. But just uh, anything else you want to say? You know, I'm representing West Virginia with Cross Bars and Big O. You're, West, you're re representing West Virginia. Anything no, no, else no, you need to no, know don't about do that. you? Don't do that. Don't what? do that. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm, I'm we go. repping. It's West Virginia right now. He's North repping Carolina. Jersey. No, he's from Charlotte. Jersey. Charlotte, Charlotte North, North Carolina with a New York hat on. That's right. Right. Tell him. Tell him. That's New York right. Right. With a New York hat on. Mm -hmm. now, now, look. Listen. He's supposed to have a Tar Heel hat on or something. Oh, I will never. I went to the oh. State <laughs> University, a historical. Oh, he went to AT. Okay, AT. I will right, never right. wear a Tar Heel hat. That's where the best basketball player in the world is from. Who is that? New Who York. You about? Oh, you. Oh my God, you like? Oh God, I didn't know you. You really like James Worthy like that? No, Michael Jordan. Oh, he's from Brooklyn. Oh, he exactly. says that. Exactly. He's from That's Brooklyn. Why he got that hat on. He's the yeah, no, player. I got it for the Yankees. These are baseball. Uh, we have no baseball. No, you got it for the Charlotte. <laughs> you from Charlotde. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I'm going to get extensions like you. Nah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, I got my brain. Yeah, yeah. Those are real, real, right? Real. I love it. I love it. Real. That's what I'm playing. <laughs> Listen, keep the same energy, kids. Look. Cause when oh, I get my, yeah. cause you see, you can spray yeah. them on now. So you know, I can, I can <laughs> bang tea, spray on some joints, and all the don't, and all I gotta worry about is rain. So we, oh, yeah. man, I seen that video. That's crazy. Yo, you see, yeah. I, it look like witchcraft. They glued it yeah. on and Yo, they glued they it on. Fade it down. I man, seen that, bro. That's I looked crazy. at the dude with the curly top, and I was like, mm, that look good for homecoming. I'm gonna have a curly joint fade. With the little tip, I, I was like, I might even Hey, here's, here's the crazy thing about me having these dreads, man. When I when I I I started growing them in 2009, October 2009. And I, I got that long. Hair, Whoa! I, I cut my hair real short, bro, and yeah. I, I I got the the honey, the strawberry jelly, and beeswax, and mixed it all in the thing, and this girl strawberry jelly. Yeah. Tanya Banks twisted them all up. And they was man, like, Tanya Whoa. Banks, shout out to Tanya. She shout yeah. out to Tanya Banks. Yeah. Tanya yeah. Banks, she, she did it. She from Logan, West Virginia. She did them, and it was like this long, and then they started growing and growing and growing. By the time I got on America's Got Talent, yeah. they were about right here. Yeah, I saw that. And then they started growing even more. Now they're like, you know what I'm saying? I can't even get it all in the picture right now. But yeah, I went to this yeah. African hair salon, uh, Nubian something off Morris Road in Columbus, Ohio. And when I went and sat in the chair, I was getting the girl to just twist my roots back down. Yeah, I was gotcha. telling her, like, twist my roots back hey, down. And touch up, got you. Yeah, and she yeah, comes yeah. over there and she's <laughs> like, what do you want from me? What do you want? And I was like, just twist my roots back down. She was like, what did you mean, twist your roots back down? I was oh, like, wow. my roots. We and then she, you know, we with the little, fro, the little fro underneath. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, she comes <laughs> over there and she feels my hair. And she's like, oh my God, is that your real hair? And I was like, yeah. She was like, no way, you grew this hair? And I was like, yes. <laughs> So she she starts talking in her language. And all these ladies come from the back and they all touching on my hair like what? And I'm like, what's going on? They didn't on? think it was like, real. They was like, we've never seen nobody yeah. come in our shop with real dreadlocks. And I was like, who's walking around with fake, fake dreadlocks in their head? Like, I didn't A know that people. people was actually doing that. 
Nah. But actually, oh, yeah, I grew, they did. This. I they grew did. this, man. Yeah, so many times yeah. they get extensions, I've heard. Uh, I mean, I can yeah. tell. I, I mean, I can see as far as Hollywood and yeah. people, like, but I, that's the original, like a dude walking the street. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the point? Yeah. Philly. So, but, yeah. but before we leave, we get in this thing where I got to ask some rapid fire questions. So I was listening, jotting some things down. And, okay. Uh, All right. Take us out. One or oh. the other, or you can do neither, but you can't do both. All right. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Hold on. Okay, here we go. All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait, wait. wait I got one more because he put that flag up. I got some for him. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Marshall. Yeah. Marshall or West Virginia. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't do that to him, but look, look. No, let's go. <laughs> so, you ready? All right, here, oh, oh, here we go. Let's go. Um, Rapid fire. Let's go. <laughs> M- Michael Michael Jackson or Prince. Wow, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say Prince because he can do anything. Okay. He plays All the right. instruments. Mm-hmm. He plays the instruments. You. He can dance. He can sing. Mm-hmm. He produces. He does it all. No, all right. Good, good. All right. Bugs Bunny <laughs> or Mickey or Mickey Mouse. Bugs Bunny. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's right. Detroit, Detroit Soul Fool or West Virginia Soul Fool. Detroit Soul. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I thought you like crack about shit. Hell, I don't know. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> got you. Well, I mean it now. If you're talking about my grandmother, so far, ah, you already answered. Got you. You I mean, said the only place I ever ate, only place other than my grandmother's house in West Virginia, I've never ate soul food anywhere else but my grandmother's house. Got you. That's in good. West Virginia, but I in Detroit, I used to go to the you know all the soul food restaurants around there. Now I love it. I grew up on it. Gotcha. All right. Gotcha. Face, Facebook or uh, or Instagram? Facebook. Okay. All right. Seems like you just going with the odd stuff. Now, I'm going to get something. See, <laughs> see, see, I know your age, so I know what you grew up on. So, Karis one or Rakim? Ooh. Rakim. Ooh. Mm, Rakim, okay. me too. Okay. Easy. Easy. But All Big right. Daddy so, Kane is the best. I like Big Daddy Kane. All right. We're going to move on. Big uh, I just thought he was cute. The most underrated. Uh, the B I G A D A double D like an A N E. Okay. Like, this, I was just questioning. Just follow me on TikTok too. I oh my god, this is like oh, right now. Oh wow! Like listen, listen. Big Daddy Kane, <laughs> the greatest rapper from that area. From that era. From that era, bro. Uh, okay, we gotta most stop this. We, gotta, we never stopped it. All right, we stopped it. Wait, 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 wait. He said that. He said that. I'm wait, gonna keep wait. saying that. No, no, no. <laughs> No, so you gonna tell me during that time because I grew up in the same night. You gonna tell me big that? Oh kid, no, LL Cool J. I ain't say big. I said the oh, best okay. rapper. Oh, all right, cool. All right. I said I the best rapper. Best, best rapper. And his opinion. Okay, that's his opinion too. But we we gonna keep on going. All right, cool. MC Breed or Twister. Oh, Ooh, that's Detroit fam. Mm. That's Detroit. It is. That's Detroit and Chicago. Yeah. Uh, as far as songs, no, like uh, 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 no, we ain't let you do that. Well, no, no. Free didn't have nothing but the the iconic song with Tupac. Oh, that's what I'm <laughs> so I'm gonna go Twisted. Well, uh, uh, okay. Okay, he going. Oh, I don't know. I just got a text. They just revoked his um hood pass from Detroit. All right, so can't <laughs> get a text, man. He ain't from hey, Detroit. He's from Grand Rapids. Yeah, I'm just saying. Oh, just saying. He, he from Flint. Matter of fact, he's yeah, he from Flint. Flint. Yeah, he's from Flint. Flint. He ain't from Detroit. And he said that Flint. Hey, if you want to talk about Detroit, we gotta go with Easy B and DJ Los. You gotta go oh. with uh oh. Eminem. You gotta go with D12. From, you gotta uh, go with Eshawn. Who started it all? Eshawn Smith. Eshawn Smith. Right? Mm-hmm. Osborne Absolutely. High School, bro. I'm right, way bro. back okay. in, bro. Okay. Uh, he's schooling you. Smiley. Oh. Ben Crosby or Frank Sinatra? Frank Sinatra. Okay. Michael Jordan or LeBron? Michael All right, thank you for the LeBron. I appreciate that. I appreciate Michael that. Jordan. Yeah, I appreciate him saying. You heard him say LeBron, right? All right. So, <laughs> so, so those were my rapid fire all questions. Day. All right. And, all and, then, and then I want to know, <laughs> you know, the finest, you know, sisters in West Virginia. Are you going to say Huntington or Charleston? 
Charleston. I'm going to say Charleston. Oh, damn. Oh, okay. Yeah, I done met some fine ones from Charleston. I don't, don't ask me how, but I just... But there's a lot of imposters in Huntington. It's a lot of Detroit. Yeah, everybody's not from... <laughs> Everybody not from Huntington. <laughs> they not. <laughs> like, got you. Listen. There's a lot of people in Huntington, Huntington that's not from Huntington. Man. You have you have your, your root crew that's still there, Let's still see. hanging around. But I, say, I, say I, say, I say Charles. I say Charles. Okay, you say Charles. <laughs> I say Charles. All, all right, right, all right, he, all right. He, all right, he all was right. on Charleston right. State, you know what I'm saying, University. I know what's going on. He was out there on Charleston the campus. Charleston State University. They ain't no Charleston State. West Virginia University. State, they call it now, but it's all good. Yeah, West Virginia State yeah, University. All, all right. Good. Well, Linda, we thank you so much for, for, for hanging out with us on Crossbars, man. Hope you had a good time. So good to talk to you and get to know you a little bit better than what we just see on the TV. You know, thank you for being yourself. Oh, you want to say anything before we take us out? No, nah, we. I, I had a pleasure. You know, I learned. I learned some stuff. I know that now he has a book out. I can read a little bit more, so I can actually fill in some pieces. I believe the book should be able to do that for me. Um, but you know, it, it was quite entertaining. I think <laughs> that you should actually reach out to the, uh, you know, producers of the BMF and be like, look, I can give you another perspective. You know, because you <laughs> live in that area. You know, that, that might start jumpstart that acting career. But I mean, like I hey. said, a lot, of, a lot of my home. Homeboys that was in the street got they stuff from that crew. God. Like God. they supplied so, down the hole. They, they listen. They talking about yeah. They was they, they was global where you grew up and you're talking about that time period. So yeah. I'm like that just and you already have notoriety. So it could make it a, a, a just a real easy transition per se. So I'm just I'm trying to speak it out and you know if I happen you know just give me my five percent. I'm good. You know what I mean? Just oh, <laughs> <laughs> you you put the thing together and I got you, fam. No gotcha. Problem. All right, there you go. I just you need a tar heel hat. I just need it. No hell, no <laughs> hell, no <laughs> hell, no. <laughs> hell, no. <laughs> this is a tar heel hat, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All no right, doubt. hey. So tell us where can we find you on social media? Just shout out all your social media platforms. Where can we find you? I'm um, at Landau Eugene Jr. on Twitter, uh, Landau Murphy Jr. on Instagram, and Landau Eugene Murphy Jr. on Facebook. You know, and all, right, all right, all right, all right. At Landau, at Landau Murphy Jr. on TikTok. Okay. All right, we're awesome. cross bars going to uh, be. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of uh, Frank Sinatra meets uh, hip hop on TikTok. Oh wow! Oh, I got it. I'm a, when you see crossbars, send you. Don't don't deny me because I'm check. We're checking it out. We okay, checking it out. Right, we're check it out. I only got two videos <laughs> up right now, but I, I think it's about to go somewhere. It's about to go somewhere, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do a whole album as if you know Frank Sinatra was hanging out with Biggie. Oh wow! That should Ooh. be interesting. And Tupac and Snoop. Like I got, I got already did Gin and Juice. I do Gin and Juice in my shows yes. as Frank Sinatra. What do you mean? Do you sing gin and juice? Rolling down, down the, street, the street, smoking <laughs> and no, sipping on gin and, gin and juice. Way <laughs> back. Way back. <laughs> I know my money. money, on my money. Absolutely. That's I heard that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I heard that. Gin and Tupac and all of them, man. So I, I plan on putting that album out after I do this original album. Right now, my latest album just came out on all platforms. Uh, mm -hmm. release, uh uh, ain't no sunshine as a single. You are able to name it that? No, I really I I, I did another uh, rendition of Ain't No Sunshine. Oh, okay. Gotcha, Bill gotcha. Withers is from West from Virginia. From West Virginia, yeah. Yeah. That was, right. that was the, that's the person who said it all for all y'all. Jerry West and Bill yeah. Withers. <laughs> he said it all. <laughs> you know, but at the same time, <laughs> I'm gonna just keep it a hundred. They was only letting the light skins out for a minute for West Virginia. Oh Virginia. my god. Yeah, they was, and y'all know it. So I don't wanna speak on that but well we the rest of y'all came out. I don't think some kind of wonderful is from West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah so yeah yeah we, we all know. these people from West Virginia man. All right. That's right keep oh, pumping us up we need it we need keep it. Pumping we it, need it. Up. Keep pumping well, it up. Leslie Nelson is from West Virginia. Naked gun one two and thirty third oh, and a half all of them oh, yeah OJ is, look OJ is from West Virginia. No, he ain't. Uh, no, he yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. No, he OJ Mayo is from West Virginia. <laughs> OJ Mayo is. <laughs> oh, OJ Mayo, yeah. OJ no. Mayo. <laughs> oh, oh, what OJ was y'all talking about? Y'all ain't claiming no, OJ? No, 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 we ain't claiming OJ. 
Uh, no, All right, y'all. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're signing off now with Crossbars. Check us out on all platforms. K-R-O-S-S-B-A-R-Z. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We come on all the other platforms. Stay focused. We see you again, y'all. Peace. Peace, Peace man.